<laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, caffeine is in the system about four to six hours. Yeah. So having it any time after noon is probably not a smart idea. Okay. Um, and, you know, that's, I, I've done, when I was first doing research, I was doing all my research on napping. And we did a study where I, I did a head-to-head -head comparison of a dose of caffeine in the afternoon versus a nap. And I actually showed across three different memory tests the nap benefited. Mm -hmm. um, and even uh, we had a placebo condition and a, and a caffeine condition. And what we found is actually that caffeine decreased performance. Um, but if you got the placebo and you sort of thought maybe you were getting caffeine, mm -hmm. you showed really good performance. You actually showed increases in performance. So if you could constantly be kind of teasing yourself that you're getting caffeine but not take caffeine, you might actually have better effects than if you took the caffeine. Right. So, I mean, but again, it follows the same rule, right? Which it's like you should be drinking caffeine probably first thing in the morning along yes, with Yes, we have rhythms, to, exactly. To stimulate that sort of upstate. Yes, exactly. I mean, you know, the fact is that we are addicted to caffeine. And, and, and the logic of drinking caffeine in the morning is not because we need to wake up. We've just had a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. It's because we're in withdrawal mm -hmm. and we need to satisfy our caffeine addiction, yeah. which is why we drink it in the morning, right? right? So... In fact, we don't really need caffeine. I mean, I drink caffeine every morning. I have a cup of tea every morning. That's not caffeine. <laughs> not to not to a real hardcore caffeine fiend like me. Okay, <laughs> fine. It's a, like a big thing of like black tea. Yeah, but that's true. That's true. <laughs> what about um, the timing of when you drink your coffee in the morning? So, listen, um, I follow Andrew Huberman. I'm a big fan. Shout out Andrew Huberman. Um, his recommendation is to delay the caffeine a little bit in the morning. I think it was like 90 minutes. Do you have any insight on that? or? I don't know what he says about that, but it's probably because, you know, we are in a state of addiction. Mm. And so letting your own system wake you up. We have what's called a cortisol awakening response, mm. which means that right before you're supposed to wake up and during the first hour or so of being awake, you actually have this spike in cortisol, which is your stress hormone, that's supposed to get you out of bed and get you going and mm -hmm. get your heart moving and, you know, not give you a heart attack, right? It'll actually get you ready for the day. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we kind of over, um, we override that by drinking caffeine. We have a natural waking up system. So my guess is what he's saying is like, you can have the caffeine, but that's not what you should be waking up with. Does it, does caffeine suppress that cortisol response? Do you know? Um, I don't know if it suppresses that cortisol response, but it but it is definitely you know we are um, we are habit because we are rhythmic, mm -hmm. we are habit formation animals, right? And so no matter what, it's creating a habit of that need. Right. So it's creating a need at a very specific hour. Right. So if you can kind of delay that for as long as possible, you may. It, you know, who knows what it's doing? I don't actually know what caffeine, that's a really good question, what caffeine is doing with cortisol awakening response. There's probably data about that. Yeah, there's probably data about that. We'll get back to you guys on that. Um, you've talked about Adderall and a lot of stimulants before in the past. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Um, well, you know, it's I, I kind of have an anti-biohacking approach, is you know. That, is that regarded as biohacking? I think Adderall? that people who are taking pills to override their natural systems it's one form of biohacking mm -hmm. i think that the the idea that you know that you can that you can sort of somehow trick the system trick nature to regenerating and do all this kind of magical stuff as as sort of a trick i think that's what the idea of biohacking is and so i, I feel like well what about if you just did the things you're supposed to do and saw how that worked first. Mm -hmm. And then maybe not, maybe, maybe you wouldn't need to do all these other things, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, an extreme version of that is obviously drinking, you know, having Adderall during the day when you don't have ADHD, right? Mm -hmm. It's the idea of like, well, if I need to be awake, I'll just take this pill, mm -hmm. right? Um, and You've called it jacking up the upstate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right? So we did research on non-medical use of stimulants during the day, and we looked at its effect on sleep, and we looked at its effect on 
daytime performance and then overnight memory gains. Mm -hmm. um, and what we found is that it actually doesn't really impact in, in the way that people think it is. These are well-rested adults. They're taking Adderall in the morning at 9 a.m. We give them a bunch of frontal lobe, you know, executive function tests during the day. We really didn't see a lot of improvement, like, like, like we really didn't see a lot of improvement at all um, in terms of the executive function when they're on the drug versus placebo during the day. What we did see is you lost an hour of slow wave sleep mm -hmm. at night. And then what we also saw is that the people who had the drug who didn't have the slow wave sleep, as much slow wave sleep, they also didn't show those memory benefits that the placebo condition did Got that it. we always show, right? Got it. So, and this is people getting the drug at 9 a.m. A lot of people don't, a lot of people take the drugs, they don't even think about when they're taking the right. drugs. They just take it, right? So even with that long day, it's still depleting your nighttime sleep. Right. Now I wonder... These were people that were taking Adderall, right, all the time. What no, about these are people naive? who had they had them. No? They had had some experience with Adderall, but they weren't they weren't regular takers. They 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 weren't naive, but they weren't, you know, abusers. Mm. And we've talked about the importance of slow wave sleep, particularly to that restore function. So, I mean, it might be getting in the way of that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There's a lot of kids on Adderall. Well, there's kids on Adderall, but then there's a lot of kids who don't have ADHD who are now on Adderall, and there's a lot of adults on Adderall. These are, I mean, this is this right, but, is this. But you're not discriminating. You're not discriminating amongst those groups, though, right? Like, if well, you, in this if study, these ADHD, are people who don't have ADHD, but for sure, the people who have ADHD have the same problems with sleep. Right. It's, they're losing slow wave sleep, yes. regardless of whether you have ADHD or yes. not, right? It's but it's also, you know, oh, yeah. like, I mean, yeah, my thought is like maybe we're just. If we could decrease the dosage, make sure that the dosage is occurred as early as possible in the that's, morning. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, how do we know what is the smallest amount? I feel like people don't always go for the smallest dosage. Right. They go for the standard dosage. The one that works the best, which is yeah. obviously going to be the higher one. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Um, what about uh, some other substances that aren't as legal as Adderall? Um like cannabis, for example, marijuana, what have you been finding in terms of sleep? So interestingly, cannabis, um, even though it has the reputation of being, you know, a stoner drug, mm -hmm. right, it actually spikes your sympathetic arousal. And right. it's, it's associated with cardiovascular um, heart attacks. Mm -hmm. and, and I was really surprised to learn that because I thought, you know, mellow. No, not mellow. It doesn't help with sleep. And it, it definitely does not help with your restorative response. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. What does it do to slow wave sleep? It decreases. It, it doesn't necessarily always in every study show decreases. Sometimes it does show decreases, but it definitely does not increase it. Mm. And alcohol? Alcohol is an interesting one because I think people start, a lot of people use alcohol to get to sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, because it actually and cannabis does. And and marijuana. Yeah, that's but that's, one of, yeah, one but of the main who knows reasons. why. Yeah. But alcohol actually does increase sleep onset. Right. But the problem with it is that it also, the second that alcohol gets sort of absorbed, you then wake up. Um, and people have, and it decreases your REM sleep. So usually mm. what happens is when you drink alcohol, you can get to sleep faster, but then you wake up in the middle of the night and you're completely awake and then you get no REM sleep. Yeah. I think I've been seeing there's significant effects on heart rate variability. Oh yeah. For chronic alcohol uh, use. I'm not surprised about that. Yeah, absolutely. 